Yes, he did. Amen, amen. But now I'm found. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. He said he committed his love toward me. He said he committed his love toward us yet while we yet sinners. Yet sinners, brother. He could have let me die and go down. That's right. But he had to give me an opportunity to make a choice to live for him or not. You said it right there, brother. I'm glad I made the right choice. Hallelujah. Amen. Me too, brother. Me too. Me too. Come with my life. Come. That's right, brother. I, 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 I'm, so, I'm so glad I'm not what I used to be. Me too, okay, brother. I, there's some things I did I'm not very pleased of, but I was ignorant and unlearned. I didn't right. know. Right, I knew brother. it was a God. I knew, I, you know, I heard that all my life, you know, through my grandma and all that. But now I know, brother Corey, I know reality. Right, of right. That word. You can't tell me anything unless it comes out of that Bible. Right. If it don't come out of that, don't come talk to me. Okay? Come on, brother. That's I'm right. Back it up. Amen. Yeah, amen. I know you do. Amen. Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. Anybody else got testimony? Sister Bauer, go ahead. Stand up and testify on Jesus. I am just so thankful for what God has brought me through through my life. 
Yes. Right, sister. He's always been there for yeah. me. He's always brought me through. Maybe. Not to say I really wanted it to. Come on now. Come on. Right, 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 sister. Amen. Well, and I'm, you know, Come on, right. sister. Come on. I just, I, I, I'm so thankful. <laughs> I love this church so much. And when we were coming years back, I love that. I love this church. Yes, amen. Amen. We love you too, sister. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for the way that God does use me at times. Yes. I I want to be in His will and just serve Him the way He needs to be served. That's right, sister. Amen. He deserves it. Well, that's just too much or whatever. Come on. Amen. Did they really get in here and learn what it is to be? That's right. That's right. Reflect his sovereignty. I, you know, but I, I just, I'm so thankful. Amen. He's, he's opened up my heart. He's opened up my mind. Amen. And he was, you know, what's going on in my life right now. I'm right. still so thankful for what he has for me. When I get those, when I get those, Yes. Right. The devil, the devil comes after me still. He and does. He's going to because right. he knows he knows where I'm going. Trying there. to and stop what you're doing right now, sister, I, is what he tries to do. That's right. And I keep telling you. I know what you're doing. I yes. know who you are. That's right. I know where you're going. Come on, sister. When, when, it's, when God comes to get us all, you ain't going up there. You ain't going with me. You're going to you stay in hell. You're going to burn the rest of your life. There you go. Keep on trying. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful. Right. I'm so thankful for the way that God has used me. Right. I'm Amen. Been married almost, well, 54 years. Praise the Lord. That's I a lot of time. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It takes a special lady to put up with Brother Bauer. I'm sure it does too. Anyway. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. I thank God for what he's doing. And I want God to continue to move. And uh, well, the Bible says we're made overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb and by the very word of what we're testifying about. What God has done in our life. The testimony. So does anybody else have a testimony on their heart? They want to testify about the goodness of God? Brother Bauer, go ahead, sir. There you go. That when God spoke, I was going to do it. Praise the Lord. Because I warned the pew so many years. Right. I warned the pew so many years. And I, one day I got down to the altar and I got serious with God. Amen. And, I'm off. and I haven't backed up since. Praise the Lord. I'm pressing forward. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm pressing forward. Because I'm persuaded no matter what comes against me, come on. I'm going to recover. That's right. We're going to have battles. We all. We're going to, we're you never going said to we weren't. That's right, brother. You never said but, we weren't. Come I on. I know man. enough of this word. That's it. That, that's where a lot of downfall people, when they fall by the wayside. Absolutely. They don't know the word. That's right. The devil breaks across the soul. That's right. Amen. Praise God. Every temptation believes in that. Right there. Praise God. That's how Satan attacks. God's people is questions God's authority and his word. You look through scripture, that's what it's always been. Satan coming up and knocking on the heart and say, did God say? Did God say? Anybody else want to testify? Anybody else want to testify on stage? You got a testimony? Brother Gene, go ahead. Brother Boy, I know the Lord tonight. 
Thank God that I'm in this house again. Yes, sir. Thank God, praise the Lord, that uh, the Bible tells us to let us press towards the mark for the prize, the high calling of God. Amen. You know, we got this is a pressing thing. It's not just a place you just play church or anything you want to. That's it's right, a pressing man. thing. It we is. got to just go ahead and, and keep on going for the it Lord. Is. Amen. It is. And I'm so happy and glad that He saved me. Yes. I'm glad he sanctified me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad, praise God, that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so happy about that, Come praise on. God. And I'm so glad that God called me back, that, that I, I'm preaching a little bit, and I thank God for that. Amen. And you know, I just love the Lord tonight, and I praise Amen. him for all the wonderful things that he's doing for me. Yes, yes, and I just yes. want to just be a service to somebody, to, yes, to somebody, I mean, and I want to be a servant to somebody, oh, yeah. amen, so y'all pray for me that I can ever stand true, amen. and give my amen. God the praise and the glory and the honor for everything he's done yeah. for me, amen. Praise the Lord, amen, hallelujah, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise once again, <laughs> somebody battling through, every time somebody stands up and says, I thank God for this, that, and the other, I just believe there's a million devils saying, oh, they're doing it again. They're doing it again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Terry, go ahead. About seven and a half months ago, he had been praying, we'll come in here, we were sitting on the floor, and he was praying for her. And there was a man sitting up front. I had been widowed 13 years. The last thing I wanted to do was get married again. Well, this old fellow comes walking up to me. He says, I've been going to church for a long time sitting by myself. Yeah. I'm tired of sitting by myself and I'm going to marry you. There you go. I thought he was crazy. That's right. He is, but no shame in his game. Month and a half later we were married there you go. in this church. Right. And you said something. You said, did you come three times to ours? Yes. Fourth time who you are here. I decided to marry this man of mine. Amen. I ain't 54 years. I've been seven months, two days, three hours. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him. I love this church. And I love being here. Amen. Praise the Lord of glory. Amen. We love you too, sister. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, have mercy. Hallelujah. Anybody else want to testify? Praise God. And maybe come to worship the Lord. Amen. I hope you have. Amen. Let's grab a couple more hymnals. We can do that right now. Let's grab. Church hymnals, page six. I want to know more about my life. Oh, me too. While I'm traveling through this world of sorrow. Thank you. 
if you want to. Let's go ahead and grab the, the let me, where's my, uh, come on up here, Justice Isaiah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I want to give you all an opportunity to give unto the Lord. And I do hope that he riches, uh, blesses you richly. I found out this to be true. Riches will bless you too as well. I'm, I know this to be true. You can't not out give God. Can you say amen? amen? And I'm not here trying to live on this earth and be rich as far as material needs and, and, and things. But I definitely want to be rich spiritually. And I know that if you only have two pennies to rub together, that's all you have. And by faith, the Lord lays on your heart to give them in the treasury. I promise you right now that if you give those two pennies, that's all you have. In the treasury, God will bless you abundantly because he doesn't look at the amount you give. He looks at how you give it. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So I just want us to be obedient to the word. And I said this morning, I'm going to go ahead and say it again right now. I would rather right now. Be blessed with the 90% that the Lord gives me. Then be cursed with the 100% that I keep to myself. What are you saying, Pastor? It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. But also, you pay your tithes. I promise you that you enter a covenant relationship with the Lord. And the Lord will continue to bless you richly in that way. Brother Warrell Butler, right where you're at, sir. Go ahead. Oh, this is now. Hallelujah. All to you, God, we're blessed, God. We're, we're a blessed people. Oh, God, we are. God, you more cheerful we give than receive, I pray. Jesus, Father, Jesus. Father, help us, this people, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody will be happy, will be church won't get it. Oh, brother, come on now. Amen. Come on, brother. They won't get it. Oh, they won't, brother. After you now sing this song, Too Much Thunder, by my brain. Amen. Too much thunder, by my brain. Too many programs, not enough prayer. Too many people
days you can grow on the river days you can flow Lord we need a blessing the shower today for the time Lord we need a rain Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. Sir? Genesis. Genesis. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. All right, going back to Jonah. We're going back to Jonah tomorrow or Sunday morning. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah's walking through Nineveh right now. Preaching. Amen. I would like to, if the Lord give me the, the ability, I want to close out this little series on the whys. Some of those harder questions that people have, and I believe this evening, if God will give me the strength to do so, we'll be able to close this out. Some of the harder questions we have is if God knew that Adam and Eve were going to fall and Satan was going to the re rebel, then why? Why even send life in the motion like he did why did he say let there be light and there was light if he knew what was going to happen in all of the the hurt the pain that sin has caused why even allow it to be and i believe thus far we we, we had a it's really a two-part question is is did god know it was going to happen and i believe the answer to that question is yes he knew it was going to happen but because of his sovereignty and his power, he also had a remedy to, to, to fulfill man's uh, uh, falling short of his stupidity, if you will. And, and the bottom line is the reason why we are in the mess today is because of man disobeying God. That's the bottom line. No matter how you sugarcoat it, no matter how you wrap it up, but that is the bottom line. That's the reason why we're in the mess we are today. But I thank the Lord for Jesus Christ because I do know that Jesus Christ yep. is the answer to that sin. He is the remedy yep. to the sickness of that sin. So if you have your Bibles, uh, Genesis chapter 3, if you remain seated, I don't know if this is going to be a, just a, 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 a spitting, hollering type of message. It might be. Uh, but I do know this is more along the lines of a uh, teaching to kind of help you understand <laughs> The, uh, the reality of where we're at to help you also to be able to articulate this word, to have an answer when somebody else asks you this question and just have a resolute mind in the heart to say, okay, I understand God a little bit more now. I believe there's going to be a certain factor that I want to point out to you that sh you should be able to help you understand life in the big question, you know, of the why. And, and I believe God will help me with that. Pray with me, dear Father. Here I am once again, and I desperately need the touch of your Holy Ghost. I desperately need your help here right now, and I know that you are able. God, I thank you for these precious people that have come to be a part of this service, part of this worship service, God. And I just pray you get all the glory. And Lord, as you help us with this word, your word is life, dear God. And I do know it to be true, and I'm asking you to touch my body, my heart, my mind, and touch my fellow brothers and sisters. Help us to understand you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. How many of you know that the word of God is powerful? It's very powerful. It's able to come in any situation and just calm some of the most heavy storms. I remember there's a particular story in the Bible, one of my favorite stories, where the disciples were going across the Sea of Galilee. 
And as they were going across the Sea of Galilee, uh, there's a great storm that hit, started to hit the boat. And here are the disciples. They're doing everything that they can do to stay afloat. And these men are, are men of, of the fishermen. They were, they were shrimpers, if you will, praise the Lord. They were uh, part of being, you know, just that hardcore uh, sailors uh, of, of catching fish. And, and now here they are getting ready to go under. And, and, and they started to worry, Brother David. They started to get fearful. And here's Jesus, the Son of God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that they believe to be the Messiah. He's right there with them asleep in the bow of the boat. So here's Jesus sleeping right here, and they wake him up and say, Master, Master, don't you care that we perish? Don't you care that we're in jeopardy right now? We're on the way uh, to die. And I believe, Brother Bo, Jesus woke up, kind of wiped the sleep out of his eye, and kind of yawned a little bit and said, Oh, okay, wait a minute. Here it go. goes ahead and gets to the very front of the boat, looks at the storm right in the eye, brother, and says, Peace, be still. Told this storm to stop its waves, stop its wind, stop the rain. You need to stop what you're doing right now. The Bible says all the disciples were amazed at the power that he had. They didn't realize who was truly with them in the boat. Church, I believe that we need to understand who's truly with us in our boat as well. I think we really need to understand that Jesus is with his people. He's with his church. He's in the gospel ship with us right now. And, and because of that, I, I think we're okay. You know, the Lord didn't say anything unless God told him to say it. Jesus never said one word, uttered one word, unless the Heavenly Father told him to speak it. And in the beginning of that little trial that they went through across the Sea of Galilee, the Lord told Jesus, let us go to the other side. He told them, let us go to the other side. So I'm telling you the reason why Jesus was asleep because he had nothing to worry about because he believed his father. He believed he was able to rest in what God has said. Let us go over to the other side. And I'm telling you, church, the only reason that we as Christians are ever to fear and the reason why it comes to us, and this is why, because there's times where we doubt the word of God. Wow. That's it. Every temptation, every, every fretting of mind and worry and stress and anxiety that comes to us, it's because we doubt the word of God. And I know it's blood, but it's the reality of it. That's what it is. We doubt what thus saith the Lord. Because if we believe that book from front to back and truly grab a hold of it, I'm telling you, we would be more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We would be able to walk outside and just live a victorious life. A thought would come to mind and it would be something along the lines of you're going to fail, you're going to die, you're not going to make it, you're going to lose everything. And we would be instantaneously able to say, Satan! Shut your mouth, the saith the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right. But what do we do? Satan shoots an arrow, we play with the arrow. Come on. We entertain the arrow. We even just don't even, you ever seen those little door stoppers, you know, on the back in little springs, and you sit there and you hit it, and you just don't even do Sometimes we do that with Satan's arrows. Sometimes it hits our mind and all we do is don't entertain the thought. But I can tell you this, there's not to say that the thoughts won't come, not to say that the attack won't come, but I promise you this, church, we don't have to sit there and allow that bird to make a nest in our head. Do you hear me? He might drop a thought or two, but we don't need to allow that bird to go ahead and make a little nest and say, hey, I'm going to camp right here, make a drop an egg or two, and just get you to entertain the thoughts of doubt, fear, anxiety, worry, hurt, pain, what if, and, and just deal with life itself. Now, I'm telling you, every one of us deal with that. Do you hear me? Even pastor himself, I get that at times. There's times I wake up, I get some news, and I start to question Sister Bauer, okay, what's next? Oh, Lord, this is going to be heavy. What's going to happen? But then I'm reminded that I've never been forsaken, and I've never had to face one test alone. I knew that my Lord God Almighty is with me and will be with me every step of the way. Can we lift our hands and praise his holy name? The only way fear will overcome you is this right here. If we doubt the word of God. The only way fear will truly just 
paralyze us. It is if we doubt the very word of God. And the reason why I know that to be true, just call it a, 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 a just a awe oh, moment today when I was in my office. Uh, I had a question sought to me and says, what, you know, what makes us fear? What are some of the tactics that Satan uses to make us fear? And I believe what it truly is, is he'll, he'll have a thought come our way, and then we question the word of God. We question whether or not God is for us, whether or not God is going to help us, whether or not we're going to get through it, whether or not we've got to go through it. But I'm here to tell you right now that there will be times where God's people will be persecuted. We will have to face problems. We will go through the fire. But Sister Terry, you know this as well as I do. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the oven, praise be to the Lord, there was a fourth man in the fire. It was the one that looked like the Son of Man. We know it to be Jesus Christ. Amen. That hasn't changed. Lord, help us now in the name of Jesus. His word has not changed. Man has tried to change his word. Many Bible scholars have spent blood, sweat, and tears in translating the scripture to be able to get this Bible in our hands. But I'm here to tell you right now, the word of God will last forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. It will be forever and ever and ever. So with the question, if God knew that Satan would fall and Adam and Eve would rebel, why would he do it? I'm going to tell you right now, I believe the word gives us the answer. And I want to go ahead and jump right into it right now. I want to jump into the fall, the reason, and see if we can just pull out some truth and be able to apply it to our lives every day. Can we do that right now? Let's do it. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 9. Now, here we are. You're going to see the call of man, which is going on today. Look at this. And the Lord God called. Everybody say called. I feel God with us right now. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Three words. Where are you at? Where art thou? I'm telling you, it's going on today, right now. God is still calling out to his people, calling out to his creation. And Adam said, and he said, I heard. Everybody say, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Why was he afraid? Why was Adam afraid? Look at this. The Bible says, because I was naked and I hid myself. Oh, Lord, half the world naked right now, Brother David. Half the world still naked right now. Not only in the physical, but in the spiritual as well. They're walking through life being spiritually dead and wide open to everything that the devil has to offer. I'm going to tell you right now, the devil is there to try to lead you into spiritual matters and try to deceive you and bring you further and further away from the very word of God. I'm telling you that if you're looking at horoscopes and trying to find your future, you need to cut that out right now because there's nothing about Libra, Virgo, or Aries that's going to tell you about your tomorrow. Why don't you go ahead and go to the one that created those stars that does say I know you tomorrow, which is Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty. I don't have to look up and see Leo and say, well, here I am. Whoever Leo the month is, I don't know, but I'm telling you, I don't have to look at Virgo and say, well, I'm a Virgo. I have an attitude. I'm crafty. I'm this, that, and the other. No, I'm telling you, whatever it is, I've got to look to God for my answer. I'm not looking at the stars, Brother Bauer. Can you say amen? I'm looking at the one who created the stars. I don't have to look at the stars and say, well, what's Friday going to be like? I'm going to hit my knees and say, well, Thursday was an easy day. Friday might be okay as well. What are you saying? Oh, what are they saying? saying the seals, Brother David? Yesterday, the only, the only easy day was yesterday. Sometimes we go through hell from day to day and that's an easy day. Can you hear me? But if you've got God with you, you don't have anything to worry about. You can face hell, high water, mountains and valleys and praise be to the Lord. He'll see you through every step of the way. Can we raise our hands and praise His holy name? <clears throat> And doubted the word of God. I was naked. I was covered with light before. Do you know that to see our brothers and sisters, they, there has to be light? Do you know that before the fall, that Adam and Eve were covered in light? That was their clothing. 
And, and, and just to say right now, if I was to turn all the lights here, this was blocked out, you wouldn't be able to see nothing. Why? Because it was dark. There was an absence of light. And what's interesting about color and light and be able to see things is you have to have light to be able to see. Come on, Come church. On, Think about it right now. If you're walking in the dark, you're hitting your shins on the coffee table. Anybody ever did that? I tell you, it seemed like the other night I got up, I hit my toe on a chair that's in my room. Lord have mercy. The chair was moved out just a little bit. I hit my toe. It's such a little toe, but boy, does it hurt back. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, but if I would have had my eyes a little open because I just woke up and the light was shining, I wouldn't have hit the toe on the chair. Can you say amen? What are you saying, Pastor? I believe there's a lot of pitfalls and traps and set before us that if we would go ahead and just believe the word of God, shine a little light on the path, let the light be the, the, the one that leads us, that, 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 that allows us to see the steps that are ahead of us, I believe we will be okay in the end matter. Oh, if we would allow the very lamp of this word to lead in God our every step. Praise God. I believe we'll be able to make it home as God has called us home. But don't you know that it takes the light to be able to see anything? Anything. And interesting about color itself, and I did a little study on this, but when you see color... You know, you're looking back at somebody. Brother David, what's interesting is that shirt, I know it's red, but it's every other color but red. The way it's reflecting off the eye right there is the color that's not there is what I'm seeing. I know, study it out a little bit. You'll say, you understand what I'm saying. But I'm saying as the light hits, you have to see things with the light. If you don't have the light on the picture, you can't see what's ahead of you. You know, you ever been driving down the road and, and, uh, and, and you've got some of these bright lights coming at you and you sit there and you're trying to see and the lights are right in your eyes. It's hard to see down the road. How many of you know you have to have light in front of you to see down the road? Can you say amen? That is the reality of it. Praise God. And you got to have your lights adjusted right too. Had the brand new bus, $130,000 worth of a machine. I'm telling you, it has a wheelchair left in there. It has the chairs just right. There ain't a lick of gum under one piece of those seats. I'm telling you, it still has that new bus smell. But what you know, I'm driving in that thing. First day I'm out there, $130,000 worth of taxpayers' money. And I'm driving down the way and I turn my lights on. And I've got those lights adjusted straight to the ground. I couldn't see hardly anything in front of me. I'm going down the road. I said, Lord, have mercy. I've got them on brights. I can barely see 10, 15 feet in front of me. Luckily, the sun was coming up. Hallelujah. Where I'd be able to see them kids on the side of the road. But what are you saying? You might have the light, but if you don't have it adjusted right Right, you still ain't seeing down the road. You got to have it adjusted right. Out of focus. Praise the Lord of glory. Where art thou, Adam? I want to know where you're at. Tell me. Where you at, Adam? I want to know. He said, I was, he, and he said, who told you that I was naked? Who told you that I was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Wherefore I commanded thee, now thou shouldest not eat. Have you eaten of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Now look at this. And the man said, the woman, the woman, it was the woman whom thou gavest to be with me. You gave me this woman right here. It's because of her. Look at this. She gave me of the tree and I did eat. Verse 13, and the Lord said unto the woman, what is this thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent. It was the serpent. It was the serpent. That old snake, he beguiled me, and I did eat. Now look at this, verse 14. You notice God didn't give the serpent an opportunity to defend himself. Notice as we read verse 14, you're not going to see God say, well, Satan, why did you do this? The bottom line is judgment came to old Beelzebub right here and right now. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of the life. And I will, everybody say, I will. 
put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Real quick, verse 22. And the Lord God said unto, and the Lord God said, Behold, the man, everybody say the man, is become as one of us. Everybody say us. Become as one of us. Bring it in the Trinity. To know good and evil. And the idea is he's able to judge good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now in that state, that fallen state. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. And he drove. Everybody say he drove. The idea is he cast out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword. Everybody say a flaming sword. A flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So once again, we must be careful to note that Adam and Eve uh, falling into sin does not mean that God is the author of sin, nor that he tempted Adam and Eve to sin. The fall serves the purpose of God's overall plan for creation and mankind. Now, it just serves in the purpose of God's overall plan for creation and mankind. This, again, must be the case or else the fall of mankind would have never happened. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm telling you right now that God knew the fall was going to happen. He knew it was going to happen, but still we see the end result, the very mystery unfolded, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We see the back of the book how everything is going to fall into place. Praise the Lord of glory. I can tell you if God knew it was going to happen, I believe he knew the remedy of it as well. If he knew that man was going to fall, I believe he knew a way of getting man out of it as well. Praise God of glory. But why? Everybody say, but why? But why? I still believe to understand eternal questions, we must look at it through the proper equation. We must look at life through an eternal perspective. If you want to have the mind of God, let's look at it through God's eyes. I'm telling you, God is limitless. Time is not held by time. He's not held by time, space, nor matter. He's outside of that. He's outside of time, space, and matter. He's not living in the outer space up on a star, Brother David. He's outside of that. Can you say amen? He's outside of that. I know that he is. So he's a sovereign God who still controls all of, uh, of the world and all of humanity. But once again, I, want, I must, we must remove time and enter faith. Remove time and enter faith. Remove time and insert faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. Because first we must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. What do you say? I'm trying to see, allow you to see the, 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 the reason for the fall. But yet see that a bigger perspective of where it will make sense. Brother Bauer, to answer this eternal question, we must look at it through the eternal eyes of a sovereign God. We must look at it that way. So if he's eternal, he's sovereign, he's limitless, he's timeless, so we must take that out to be able to see all of this life in one time and enter faith. It makes a little more sense then. Not fully are we able to grasp it because his ways are above our ways. But still able to see it just a little bit clearer. Knowing that okay, suffering, hurt, sin, all of that. It's more painful the more you're in it. You know, the more you feel it. So if you're able to see the beginning and the end. All that one Time, praise the Lord, by taking time out, it makes a little bit more sense to, to see the why. 
Now, does that make sense to anybody right there? Am I helping you here? I'm hoping I am because this is one of the questions that have plagued people for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. The why question. The why question. And I do believe as we take time out and insert faith, God gives us a deeper understanding of who he is. Now, it is literally the balance of life, good versus evil. And I know the Chinese say it's like a yin and a yang, but I don't believe that. There's always, good always does prevail, but but, but evil is, is in a place where it, it glorifies it glorifies evil. What are you saying? It seems like evil wins at time, but the last result of it, the Bible says, all good things come from above, but all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to the purpose. All things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to their purpose. Now let me ask you this question. I want you to give me an answer. Are there absolutes? Yes or no? Yes. There are absolutes. So there must be an absolute good. So there must be an absolute evil as well. There's people who believe there are no absolutes. There's no absolute. And what that is, it brings in judgment. Judgment brings in the reality of, of, of good and evil, right or wrong. The devil is so slick to take out the absolutes of life and say, hey, no, there is no beginning with us. It's just there's no ending with us. We're just here for a time. We live, we breathe, we die. That's it. Are you absolutely sure about that? Well, I am. So you just agree that there is an absolute. There is an absolute. I'm telling you, nobody has made it off of this earth by a one way. Now, I know there's been astronauts. They went off into space, but you know what? They've come back, so we think they have. There might be a few of them floating they weren't able to get. But the bottom line is, the only way you're going to leave this life is through one word, death. That is the only way. That's absolute truth. Unless you know the Lord. And if you know the Lord, just like Enoch and Elijah, praise be to God, death ain't going to grab a hold of you in the way that we think it will. But I'm telling you, if you know the Lord, when the trumpet sounds, praise be to the Lord of glory. When the eastern sky opens, the church itself, which are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up with the Lord in the air. How did we die? We died already when we accepted Jesus. When we say, Lord, I do, the old man has passed away. We have died right then and there with him on the cross. We were buried with him in the sepulcher. Three days later, we come walking out in victory, just as he did. Do you hear me, church? I'm telling you, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the old man is already dead. What are you saying? It's appointed unto men once to die. After that, the judgment, I died. I was guilty. But through the righteousness and the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm made whole, and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So what are you saying? Saying, Pastor, I've got my rapture ticket, and I hope you do too. Uh -oh. Hallelujah. I have my rapture ticket. One way, brother, his name is Jesus. It's already stamped, paid in full, too. I don't owe anything on it. Hallelujah. All I got to do is keep it. Brother Bo, I got to keep it. I better give it to the wife then. <laughs> I've got to keep it. I've got to keep it in order. i got to make sure that I keep my ticket with me. I can't get my ticket away. This is, ticket is particularly for you. Amen. It must be. It must be mine. I must hold on to it. So we understand that there are absolutes. And to understand this grand scheme, this grand uh, thought of life itself, when we take faith out, oh my Lord, excuse me, take time out and insert faith, we see it as a whole. Now look at this. If we consider what some theologians call, and it's called the meta-narrative, and what it is basically is the overarching storyline of life, Scripture, scripturally we see it this way, that biblical history can be roughly divided into three main sections. Number one, paradise. That was Genesis 1 and 2. That was paradise. Everything was good. It was real good. It was wonderful. No issues until man messed it up. Man did the one thing that God told him not to do. 
do not partake of it. Like I said when I first opened up this uh, message, that we wouldn't be in this mess at all if we would obey God, if Adam wouldn't obey God. Adam. And you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, majority of us wouldn't be in the mess that we get into if we would just obey God as well. Come on now. <coughs> Praise the Lord. That's the reality of it. Oh, my God. Obeying the King of Kings. Now, this is the area that we're living in right now. It is called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost, which is Revelation chapter 3 to Revelation chapter 20. But then we're going to live in Paradise Regained. Paradise Regained, if you read Revelation 21 and 22, you will see by far the largest part of the narrative is the devoting, uh, devoted to the moving from Paradise Lost to paradise regain. That's where we're living at right now. We're living in just this paradise being just, just lost right now. But eventually, praise God, everything will be set right in the center of this biblical history 2,000 years ago, an old wooden cross on Mount Calvary. The center of it all. If you look at history, that's what sticks out the most. That is the pivotal point. Do you hear me? For God so loved the world that he gave he gave his son, Jesus Christ. I can tell you before the, the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. You and I predestined to be saved. Hallelujah. Predestined to be born again. Predestined to know God on this eternal level. God has given each and every one of us a measure, a measure. Everybody say measure. A measure of faith. A measure of faith. We believe. Now to enter the spiritual, we must enter the spiritual spiritual by faith. People believe Ouija boards. They believe white magic, black magic. They put their faith once again in the fortune cookie, in the horoscopes. They put their faith in the stars. Me, I put my faith in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I put my faith in the very word of God, the never changing word of God. That is the reality of it all. People put their faith in man. Man will they let you down. People put their faith in government. Government will impose from the inside out. I'm telling you, the one thing to overlast and always last is the living word of God. I put my faith in God. My faith in what it is said. He said that I've sent you my son. Israel rejected them. Because Israel rejected them, praise be to God, me and you right now are saved. Hallelujah. Because Israel said I want no part of this Messiah, the Gentiles say, hey, we need a God. We want to be saved. We'll accept them. Hallelujah. We'll repent and be made whole. And because of that, we are here right now in this church. Praise the Lord. That baby heard me preach for nine months in a muffled sound. A hot spa. She's still hanging in there, but it was more like. But now she hears it wide open. Clear as a bell. It won't run, won't run, won't run, won't run. <laughs> oh, no. I hear you. Oh, mama protecting her. She's still good. She got saved today in my arms. Praise the Lord. I held her today in the picture. She just put her hands together and started praying. Right then and there. I think she was praying for grandfather is what it was for Poppy. Praying Lord touches man right now. He's a mess. Amen. Deliver me. <laughs> But the grand scheme of things, I don't, I mean, think about it. Jesus was, was meant for Israel. Israel said, no, 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 no. He's not the Messiah we think he's going to be. We think he's going to come in as a soldier like David and just come and take over. The Romans going to be shut down. It is going to be liberty and freedom for all. But Lord have mercy. They, they didn't see the big picture of things. You see, when Jesus came on the scene, it wasn't just about one sect of people. It was about all of the world, all of humanity, all those who were living and dead. Do you understand? Stand. It wasn't so much, okay, I'm here to rule and reign and bring this people and just be a mighty king. No, he's come to take care of the, the very sin issue as well. As John said, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the very sin of the world. Do you hear what that says? Takes away the sin of the world, the perfect sacrifice of the Lamb. The blood coming down, oh, Mount Golgotha, just being poured down. I'll, 
Hallelujah. The blood just being poured down right now on Mount Golgotha. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the blood, each and every one of us would still be lost. But because of the precious blood of the Son of God, each and every one of us are free, free, free. We're forgiven. The righteousness of Almighty God is put upon us right now. Can we lift our hands up in the air? Oh, the very sovereignty and power of God. His knowledge surpasses our ways. You know what? I'm telling you, we are grafted into this vine. We're a wild vine. Brother Waddle, I think you're a wild vine. We're a wild branch. But I'm telling you, Israel themselves, don't think they're not coming back in. Eventually, they will be back in. But in the meantime, praise the Lord, graft me into this root. Graft me into this old dry root on dry ground. Graft me into Jesus Christ. I want to stay with him. Go ahead, put me in, splice me in. I want to be a part of this promise. And I'm telling you, because of that, hallelujah, I'm going to make it all the way home. You're going to make it all the way home. For God so loved the world that he gave. There's people who don't believe that. There's people who believe that Israel is only the choice people. That the Muslim nation only the choice people. I'm telling you, I read in that book where it says, For God so loved the world, loved us all, he said, he, he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him, look at this, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, do you hear that, church? What a beautiful plan of salvation it was. Sent them 2,000 years ago. The deciding factor was Christ crucified. Israel said, we don't want them. Oh, we don't want no part of them. Well, God said, okay, you don't want them. I'm going to send them on then. And I'm telling you, still in God's sovereign plan, oh, my Lord, it took a priest, a priest to sacrifice them. I can tell you, as Caiaphas was out there, he was saying, crucify them. The people were crucifying them. Israel was saying, crucify them. Israel sacrificed the choice lamb, the perfect lamb, sacrificed it for God. God inhaled the sacrifice, the sweet smelling sacrifice, and said, I will take it as my own. But Israel said, had to be that way. They fulfilled the law of God for all of humanity. Do you see it, church? Israel sacrificed the Son of God so every one of us can have redemption, so we can be free. The sin offering was given for all of humanity of all those who have accepted. Can you lift your hands in the air and praise them right now? And through Israel's rejecting, they sacrificed Jesus. They sacrificed him. Because of that sacrifice, hallelujah, I accept it. I receive it. I take it in. The solution to man's rebellion is the cross. Oh, can you say Amen. Peter, standing after he was baptized with the Holy Ghost, look what he said. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken. Everybody say, ye have taken. And by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Brother Waldo, oh, think about that. Think about that. The wages of sin is death. Death couldn't hold down Christ. I'm telling you, it was right then and there, a fulfillment of the law, but that grace and mercy superseded the law of God. It uh, superabounded. Oh, Brother David, he was there. Death trying to hold on to him. Death trying to keep him there. But I'm telling you right now, death started to lose his grip. Wait a minute. The Holy Ghost said, Jesus, it's time to get up. Jesus, it's time to get up. Yeah. Death's like, wait a minute. I'm trying to get my grasp here. Let me go ahead and see if I can grab this suede. There's no sin on this man. Let me see if I can grab a foothold. Wait a minute. I can't even hold on his finger. I can't hold on to his pinky toe. I can't wrap him up any longer. Death couldn't hold him. Can you say? Hey man, death couldn't hold him. Hallelujah. He came out of the grave just as God said he would. The Lord came out of there three days later. The stone rolled away. Praise be to God. And because of that, we have life. And we have life more abundantly. Can you lift your hands in the air right now and praise His holy name? His holy name, little buddy. His holy name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my Lord. What a day it would be 
It was foreknown. He knew it. God knew it. It was foreordained. Uh, the Lord worked out a solution that Christ would go to the cross and give his life as a ransom for many. To all who would believe. To all who would put forth the faith that God has given them to be saved. And Matthew, the, the, those chosen by God, the very foreknowledge, and the predestined to help his people. As we read through the scripture very carefully and taking what has been said thus far, we are lead, we're led to the following conclusions. Number one, and I'm going to be closing with these right here. The rebellion of Satan and the fall of man were foreknown and foreordained by God. You hear me? God knew about it. He knew it was going to happen, but it also it was predestined, predetermined, but so was the cross. God knew all how it was all going to work out. Now look at this. Those, the second part is, those who would become the people of God, the elect, were foreknown and foreordained by God. Not predestined to, to fail or, or even to succeed, but we were chosen. And as the time continued, we made the right decision. Hello? The correct decision. Each and every one of us are still brought to that position as Adam and Eve was in the garden. You say, well, if I was there, I wouldn't have made that decision. If I was there, I wouldn't have eaten the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm here to tell you right now that each and every one of us make that decision every day. Are we going to believe God or not? Each and every one of us make that decision. Do we believe God or don't we believe God? Every, every day we still make that decision. Well, I believe that we accept Jesus Christ as the personal Savior. We believe God. But I'm telling you, as the Holy Ghost knocks on your heart's door, that is the only way to Jesus Christ. The only way. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Remember, the Holy Ghost leads us to Jesus, and Jesus leads us to the Father. I've been following old Joel Osteen. Anybody know who Joel Osteen is? That dude smiled, man, his teeth about blind me with that smile. No disrespect to him, but I do believe he's a charlatan. I believe he's in it for the money. I believe he's trying to make a name for himself. You know, his daddy, you live, look at his daddy, do a little research on his daddy. His daddy preached it right. His daddy, you look at what he was saying, wait a minute, his, his daddy has some, some words to say. But Joel, his son, something changed. He was asked the question exactly that. Is there any other way to heaven? And he was very slick on the way he answered. He said, well, no, no, there's, there's different ways to Christ. But Christ is the only way to heaven. Now, Oprah Winfrey says there's many ways to heaven. And it has a, a big follower about that right now. But I'm telling you that the Lord said there's only one way. And that's through Jesus Christ. And if you notice, the, the, the message is always this. You can have better now. You can have no health problems, a fatter bank account. You can enjoy life to the fullest now. Now, well, I'm telling you, I thank God for the blessings. I thank God for the blessings now, but I want to live life when the Lord comes back. I know he's promised me a place, praise be to God, that eye has not seen, ear has not heard. A place of glory with no sin, no hurt, no pain. That's going to be my home. That's when I'm going to flourish. Right now, I still flourish in victory every step I take, and I'm going to make it and make it home. And by the grace and mercy of God, I'm going to bring everybody with me, and that will come. But it's your decision. They see, what it said was, did you hear the deceptiveness of it? He says he believes there's many ways to Jesus, but Jesus is the only way to God. You see the deceptiveness there. You know, I'm telling you there's only one way to Jesus, and that's through the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost leads you and I to Jesus, and Jesus leads us to the Father. If you take away the Holy Ghost, then you're looking, listening to some other spirit, some other spirit, an anti-spirit, leading you to a different Christ. Do you hear me? There's only one way. It's through God the Father. Amen. God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. The only way. The Holy Ghost leads you to Christ. Christ leads you to God. That's the way it is. That's what the Bible teaches. There's only one way. It's our responsibility to be Holy Ghost filled. Leading people to Christ. Christ leading people to God. That's the only way. 
Oh, but foreordained. And what I'm saying is, this is what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit has knocked on every one of our hearts' doors. And has said, will you accept Jesus? But Brother David, what's sad is I believe there's going to be a day where there's going to be a last message preached. There's going to be a last altar call. There's going to be a time when the Holy Ghost will stop dealing with an individual and saying, hey, there's only one way to come to the Lord, and that's through Christ. And that person will reject Jesus for the last time. But I can tell you right now, I'm looking at it, people, looking through some eyes that I believe that there's still hope all the way through. Isn't that right, little buddy? Is there still hope? I think there's still hope. Can you give me a five? How about it? Give me a five, buddy. Just one right now. It's all right. I believe there's still hope. I believe there's still hope through the very Spirit of God. And I wonder if we would just grab a hold of that truth, knowing that there's only one way, and his name is Jesus Christ. Last but not least, the third part of this whole thing is the Lord knew Jesus would be crucified. He knew that the Lamb would give his life for his people. He knew that he would willingly give his life. You see, Herod didn't take his life. Caiaphas didn't take his life. Those Roman soldiers didn't take his life. It was Jesus that gave his life. The Bible says before the very foundation of the world, it was predestined for you and I to come to the saving knowledge of God. Now let me ask you this question. This is what blows my mind right here. Now as the Lord has given us the knowledge to accept this great salvation, what would it be like if we never had to experience heartache and pain? It'd be a wonderful day, wouldn't it? But let me ask you this question. Would you ever know about God's grace and mercy unless you always had to go through a little trial? Would you ever been able to experience God's extending hand to pull you out of that miry clay if you wanted it? Would you ever know what it's like to be healed if you were never sick? Would you never know what it's like to have a stability of mind and heart if you never had to go through hell or high water? I'm going to tell you right now, as we look at the full balance of this gospel in life, God foreordained and knew what it would be like. But praise the Lord of glory, he's given us the antidote, and his name is Jesus Christ. Now that those that have experienced hell on earth, there's going to come a day where all sin is going to be taken away. There's going to be no more cancer, no more hurt. Oh, Aiken Davis Funeral Home in Clouston and LaBelle and Riverdale, out of business, do you hear me? There's going to be no more death, no more pain, no more hurt. The very remembrance of pain will be gone. Can you say amen? The very remembrance, remembrance of hurt will be gone. Oh, all the times that you ah. stayed up late, just concerned, worried about this, that, and the other, all that's going to be gone. Hallelujah. Not going to have to worry about the tomorrow because tomorrow is going to be an eternal continuation of eternal life that we accepted with Jesus Christ. And I can tell you this, church, I believe God knew how it's all going to turn out. But this is it. This is Brother David and I. We've had this conversation. Go ahead and stand up with me right now. Brother David, you want to play something on the guitar? Brother David and I, we've had this conversation back and forth. Oh, praise the Lord. We've got some power coming between us. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, Brother Conductor, the question right now, does God know who's going to go to heaven or hell? You think about it. Does God know who's going to make it? Well, I believe in his sovereignty. Definitely predestined. But I still believe man has a choice. I believe in the mixture of God's sovereign will and man's choice. Everybody will be in heaven to those who are meant to be there. But those in hell will know why they're in heaven. God's not picking and choosing and saying, you, you, you. Man will know when there are a day in hell, the reason why they're there. It won't be, oh, will God put me here? No, it will be because you chose to go. You chose to go there. And I'm telling you, the first week in heaven, you're going to know the reason why you're there. Brother Bauer, 
It's going to be because you trusted in the Son of God. Because you put your faith in Jesus Christ. You put your hope in Jesus. And you're going to see him face to face. Right now, we see it darkly. We don't know the whole picture. It's hard to understand. It's understanding all. But I do know there's going to come a day that we're going to be known even as he is known. Sister Gina, to be able to know it all at right. one point in time, instantly. That's why I had to go through that. That's why I had to face that. That's why I was there. Because God, you were working it out. You were working it out for my good. And in the meantime, We've got to take out time and put faith in the scenario and say, God, I don't know how long it's going to be, but you do. And I'm going to put my faith and hope in you. In the meantime, Lord, I'm going to trust you with my own heart. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. Lord, in the meantime, I'm not going to be afraid, be anxious for nothing.